Hi everybody, how's it going? East River G3 here, and today I want to do something completely different. I've been wanting to do this for a while. This is kind of a crash course, a quick guide in your guide to playing in musical theater if you're a guitarist. Um, there's a lot of people that play electric guitar, you know, in rock bands or what have you, country bands, um, that maybe want to get into playing musical theater, you know, like Broadway pit orchestras, you hear it referred to as pit orchestras um, frequently, you know, the pit. Not always we play in a pit, of course. Sometimes we're on stage or whatever, but you generally hear it referred to as the pit. Um, and this is just a real kind of quick crash course guide because there's so much to talk about when it comes to this uh, that I could talk for hours about it. But if you're interested in playing in theater and you haven't, I have seen a lot of people ask questions that do want to play and they don't exactly know how to get into it or what to do exactly. These are my tips on what you need to know and what you need to be able to do to be a successful pit guitarist. Um, I'm going to list a couple bullet points I have here of what I think are important things you should be able to do well. They're not necessarily in um, order of importance, although some of are a little bit more important than others, but let me just start with what I think is probably the most important, and this is going to be um, kind of a tough pill to swallow for some people, I think, but it, unfortunately it is the name of the game, and that is that you must be able to read sheet music. I know I'm not speaking down to anybody here. I know there are, of course, plenty of guitarists that are phenomenal musicians that cannot read sheet music. Um, but if you are going to play a musical theater show, a Broadway show, a tour, a local, you know, anything, even a local, you know, little community theater, you must be able to read music. No bones about it. It is something that you have to be able to do. You cannot get by um, on your ear. You have to be able to read. When you get a score for a show it will never ever be in tablature it is going to be in standard notation that is something that can come to a shock and i have seen come to a shock to a lot of people that are just expecting well it's a guitar book they'll put it in tabs that's not going to happen it's always going to be standard notation sheet music um some shows are different than others it totally depends on the show you know some shows uh don't have the guitar doing anything crazy you're just playing chords so you'll have slashes, we call them uh, chord slashes, meaning they will, on the, you know, on, still on a standard notation staff, a treble clef, which is what the guitar reads in, um, they'll just have slashes which indicate which rhythm they want you to play the chord in. You know? So they'll have the chord name above and the rhythmic slash saying, please play this chord with this rhythm. Sometimes they just put um, quarter note slashes in, which basically means, you know, have at it, play whatever you want, whatever chord, you know, play the chord in whatever rhythm you want, but please play it in the style that the song is in. Uh, but other shows are completely written out, uh, have licks, and, and there's normally a mix of the two. Some show, like, uh, ten, tends to be older shows um, where the guitar is more taking more of a rhythmic role. You'll just be playing chords, and then newer shows have you going kind of crazy playing all sorts of things. But yes, you have to be able to read very well. Um, the, and understandably, the guitar is a very difficult instrument to learn how to read. Uh, it, you know, and because the guitar fills a role of rock music and and stuff like that, it, a lot of guitarists don't learn to read because it's not really necessary, like it is on some other instruments. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to learn how to read. Uh, and it's difficult to learn how to read guitar because unlike something like a saxophone where you learn how to play a middle C on guitar, you can play the middle C in multiple places. And when you're playing a lick, you might find, oh, I need to, you know, and I'm sure that you found this in your own practicing. If you don't read music, oh, I'm going to play this lick here rather than here because it fits a little bit better. Um, but that sort of minutia of learning how to fret something on the fretboard comes into play when reading music, and it's a little bit trickier than a tab where it just tells you, hey, play this on the 12th fret, whereas it might be playing it on the second fret, you know, of the, like, let's take like a, an E, an E that you would find uh, E above middle C, uh, E4. Um, you would play that uh, on the D string on the second fret, or you could play that on the seventh fret of the A string, or you could play that on the 12th fret of the low E string. You get what I'm saying. So it is tricky, um, but it's just something that you're going to have to learn how to do. 
uh, the best way that I would recommend to do this is to probably, probably, I know it seems silly, but I do recommend this is to get a beginner guitar book, like the modern method of, of guitar for the Berkeley method, something that, uh, is only written out in standard notation and starts very simple. And then of course gets more and more complex. It might seem silly to, you know, you might be a good guitarist, but it's gonna, something that's going to help you learn how to read. And then the other thing I would recommend, I always recommend this is just to play through books, try to get your hand on as many musical guitar books as you can and try to really work your way through reading them because you're going to start to learn you know, it's like learning little licks and it'll just become easier to you as well as expanding your repertoire of, you know, of musical theater. So I definitely recommend that. Now, sight reading is another thing that comes into hand. Of course, you need to know how to read to sight read. But after you've improved your reading skills, I absolutely recommend improving your sight reading skills, which if you're not aware of what that is, it means you're playing something for the first time you've never seen it before. That does not mean you've looked through the book briefly and played through a couple things and then you're gonna go in and really nail it. That means you have never seen this before and you're going to play it the first time. Of course, you know, you're not, it's not expected that you play everything perfectly on the first time, but sight reading is something that uh, is a learned skill. Uh, in addition to reading, I think they're totally separate because there's little tricks you learn and things like, oh, some people, everybody does it differently. Like I read two or three measures ahead when I'm sight reading um, so that I kind of know what's coming. When I turn a page, my eyes immediately jump to where, you know, it's heavy ink on the page. And I kind of, all of this happens in a split second. Uh, I know it sounds crazy, but it's it's just something that you learn as you do it more and more, you, you it starts to become second nature, just like reading. You might think reading is ridiculously hard, but you probably thought playing an E major chord or an F major bar chord was ridiculously hard when you started playing guitar. And now I'm sure, you know, you can play an F major bar chord with no problems. You don't even think about it. And the same goes with reading. You'll just, you'll just do it. And you, same with sight reading. You know, you'll, you'll quickly scan the page in a split second and you'll you'll know, okay, something tricky's coming up. I got to really, you know, get that. Or, you know, you might say, oh, that looks a little too tricky to read and nail. I'll take that down an octave just for this purpose of this rehearsal or this take or whatever. Um, in musical theater, you don't have to sight read too much um, because, you know, you, you might come into a case where you get to the first band read and you are seeing the book for the first time. So that's where sight reading comes in handy. You don't want to be that person that's the weak link in the chain that's pulling everybody back because you can't read very well. Um, but more often than not, you are going to get the music beforehand. But you don't often get a lot of time with a book. Uh, that's another thing that some people are shocked by, that you don't get like months and months to learn this music. And I want to tell you that uh, musical theater, it might not be your cup of tea, but it is not easy music. And that's a sh that's something that I've dealt with before. People that kind of almost scoffed at musical theater, like, oh, I like show tunes, you know, whatever, man. And then they can't play the music because it's hard. There is There's any number of things, you know, musical theater can be any style. It can be any complexity and difficulty. So yeah, there are some unbelievably hard things you might have to play in musical theater. And sight reading does help there. If you get the book two weeks before the show, if you can read something on the first go, then you've really lessened your load of learning the music. You can kind of play it on the first time, and then a lot of your time can be spent perfecting the music rather than just trying to learn it. So um, that's my tip with that sight reading. Um, and with all of these bullet points, if you want any other um, information or advice or anything, please let me know and I'll be happy to expand upon that. My second one, which really would be the second biggest thing, um, is that you must be able to follow a conductor. Again, these are things, <laughs> they're all really things that come to a shock to some people. Um, yes, you need to be able to follow a conductor. A rock guitarist is not going to be usually following a conductor, especially if you're playing in a bar band or not even a bar band, just a touring band or anything. You're not playing with a conductor. Um, but yeah, if you're playing a rock musical, you're still going to be following a conductor. If Even if it's a show with a five-piece band and there's just a 
the musical director is playing keyboards, even if he's not really playing that often, he's still going to be conducting the show from his piano, and you're going to be having to follow him. Even in a show like Rock of Ages, which is all 80s, you know, hair metal stuff, you know, tunes we all know, you're still going to be following the musical director who's playing piano, and you're not just going to be like, all right, let's count it off. He's going to be counting it off. He's going to be conducting you. You're going to be dealing with things like tempo changes and things. You'll be dealing with songs that you know but are in a different key or have different arrangements or maybe medleys. Um, And then you'll be dealing with things called vamps that a lot of people are unfamiliar with that aren't initiated, which are basically sections or measures or groups of measures of the song that are repeated indefinitely. Normally it's because there's dialogue or there's some sort of thing they're waiting to happen. Um, and you never know how many times you're going to play it. You will fall into a groove of like, oh, we generally play this four times, but it's live theater. Anything can happen. You don't know how many times you're going to be doing it. So you need to be looking f- at, you know, at the conductor. You kind of have to memorize certain sections of the music just so that your eyes are on the conductor. He's going to cue you out of the vamp. All conductors conduct differently. Some conductors will cue out of a vamp differently, but um, you'll learn, you know, and generally you'll, if, if you've played with a conductor or a music director who's playing keyboards, you'll get what their little signs or hand signs are for that. Not all conductors conduct like traditionally with a baton. Of course, they conduct with their hands or their head, you know, if they're playing keyboards. But um, some shows you will be playing, like, for instance, like the show Wicked, you're going to be playing a lot of rock guitar. But you're also, you know, half the band is a is a rock band, half the band is a symphony orchestra. So there is a traditional conductor with a baton, and he is going to be conducting the entire show. There's plenty of shows like that, and you just need to be able to follow his cues. Some tra- conductors, traditionally symphony conductors, conduct ahead of the beat, and that's something that's very tricky. But you have to get used to it. They will. Um, you can't. You can't play exactly what they're conducting because you'll be off from the rest of the band. They just conduct slightly ahead of the beat, and they do that so that you can anticipate what's going to happen. If there's a big hit or a big big volume change or something, they're going to relay that to you with their hand gestures and their baton slightly before it happens. Not all conductors do that. Some conductors conduct on the beat, and uh, it's just something you're going to have to get used to. Try watching conductor videos on YouTube. It doesn't have to be musical theater. It can be classical music. Um, that'll help you understand how some conductors work. Uh, there's st- there's also musical theater scores of conductors, though, and that's something I suggest watching. There's plenty of them on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, the next point is that you need to be able to gel with a group that you've never played with. That's the thing is musical theater. Oftentimes when you show up to the first rehearsal, you've probably never played with these people before. There might be situations where you've played, you know, um, it might be a local gig. You've played with these people or, you know, you've just, you've played, you've run the gamut and played, you know, you get called in for a gig somewhere, you show up, there's a drummer, you know, there's a trombone player, you know, Uh, But a lot of times you're never have going to play with these people and you're going to have to sound like you've played with them your whole life. Um, In terms of advice for that, uh, it's just kind of, of course, you want to just know your music as well as possible and play it as well as possible and be able to follow the conductor. Um, But as you get gain experience in doing this, you'll just kind of, it's kind of hard to explain, but you'll you'll understand very quickly people's styles and how to blend with them and uh, the little things that they do and how to, if you have a solo with someone, you'll, you'll pretty quickly pick up their style and how to gel with them. Another tip is to be, and this is also extremely important, is to be extremely flexible in the styles of music that you play in your genres. You're going to want to know how to play in pretty much every genre under the sun. Um, if you're someone who wants to get into musical theater and you only play, let's say, rock music, well, you need to know how to play jazz music as well and calypso music and polkas and pop music and anything, any style of music. Because, you know, a lot of shows might be one style like, well, let's say you're a rock guitarist and you get hired to play Once Upon a Mattress. Well, that's a traditional theater show through and through traditional Broadway sound from, you know, fifties. So you're going to be playing a lot of, um, comping jazz style. You're going to want to be able to do that convincingly. So you don't stick out. You're going to want to be able to play pop music. 
You're going to want to be able to play country music, very different styles of music, because if you at approach this music with out any um, practice in that style, you're going to sound like a rock guitar player trying to play that. Now, you might be able to play the notes on the page, but what sets apart a good player from a great player is one that can blend in that style, and that makes the music sound more convincing. Remember that it's not the guitarist show, it's not the band show, it's a musical theater show, so you're supporting the singers on stage, and you're all part of, you know, you're all a wheel uh, or a cog in this grand design of this show. You all have a role to play. So the better you are at slipping into a style, the more convincing it is and the less work that has to be done in making the show seem realistic. So if you know all the little tricks of country music, like, um, you know, how like little licks and, and oh, I'm going to hold my pick a little bit back on the bridge to make it a little more snappy and twangy, those little things go a long way in making everything more convincing. Uh, so definitely listen to as many styles of music as you can. I'm not saying that you have to become a master in every single style of music. It's more like enough to fake it. I think that's the best way to describe it. Of course, if you can become very proficient in many different styles, that's great. But if you know enough to just kind of fake it and get by, I think that's good enough. It's a lot better than just reading the music on the page because it's just going to sound plain and straight. So yeah, definitely want to do that. There are shows that have so many styles it would make your head spin a show i always talk about and is really surprising to a lot of people is legally blonde the musical you know yes the the, the movie legally blonde that show you wouldn't think it you would think maybe i don't know pop music or something there's pop music there's dance music there's rock music there's traditional irish music there's jazz big band swing there's lots of different styles of music, and again, the better that you are at being a chameleon, the more convincing it's going to sound. Um, and what goes hand-in-hand in hand with this is having a good tone, because in musical theater, you don't want to come in with a heavy tone. You don't want to come in with a real distorted tone, unless it calls for that, unless it's a punk musical or a heavy rock musical. But you really want to have a tone that is kind of neutral. You don't want to have... I've, I've played with guitarists who can read the music and they can play every note on the page and when they hit that overdrive or distortion pedal, it sounds like a buzzsaw. You really want to have a good saturated overdrive, you want to have a nice clean tone, and you want to have a good lead tone. You want it to be nice and saturated, maybe with some delay on it, but you don't want it to be super, super heavy if it doesn't call for that. So in, in general, a good you know, bag of tricks tone, I call it a good all around tone. You want to go a little less overdriven than you think you need because you don't want to muddy it up. You, you might be playing with a lot of people. You might be playing with 12, 13, 14 people, and you don't want this oh, super ho overdriven sort of sound, super heavy. That's going to just make things start to sound muddy. You're not going to cut through the mix. I mean, that's a good tip with anything. You're going to want to boost your mids more than you think you do. Um, but yeah, I do suggest that you probably turn the distortion back a touch than you think um, because it will cut through the mix and sound good. Um, but, you know, if it calls for it, like if you're playing American Idiot, you know, like the Green Day album, there's a musical of that. You're going to want a nice overdriven sound like you want to sound like a punk rock guitarist. Um, but yeah, but you need to be able to like, again, if you're playing a jazz tone, you don't want to just have a nice clean tone. Like if we're if you're a country guitarist. You don't want to have that country, you know, telly tone for or a big band song. You want to have a nice jazz box sound. Or if you're playing a country song, you want a nice, snappy, clean, bright tone. Um, playing a guitar like a telly or a strat is normally what people do because there are they are pretty versatile. Um, I personally play a hollow body guitar, which is almost like the anti guitar for theater. But I have coil splits on my humbuckers. So, I, for instance, I just played Rent, which is like heavy rock, punk rock, um, you know, pop ballads. And I can get a nice, you know, humbucker bridge pickup tone for leads and, and you know, nice rhythm. Um, but I also am going to be doing a country show very soon and I can split the... I can split the coils. I have a really snappy single coil tone. That's just why I do that. It's a guitar I like and it's very versatile, but you know, consider, um, consider what guitar you use. You know, if it's a country show, you might not want to show up with a, a Les Paul, you know, um, of course people can get by on whatever, you know, uh, Ted Green played a Telecaster for jazz. 
you know, there's plenty of guitarists that play what they want. Les Paul played, you know, jazz and, and rockabilly sort of stuff, but he played a Les Paul, obviously. Um, so you can get by, but um, just keep that in mind. You don't want your tone to be nasty. Spend some time making sure your tone is real smooth and and, uh, and, and sounds good. You don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. Um, you're going to be asked to use effects a lot of the time, so make sure that you take the time to balance your effects. You don't want some... You know, if you have a lead tone, you don't want your delay to be pooling over like crazy, some ambient sort of tone. Uh, you know, I always like, I always tell guitarists to have a signature sound. I, I really like when guitarists, um, you know, they don't, you know, copying people is cool, but it's always great when you fi kind of find your sound. Um, so, yeah, you definitely want a little bit of your tone your signature sound to bleed over into that i think that helps make things sound organic but also remember that it's not the you show it's it's a musical that you're 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 it's a job for you so you definitely want to serve the music um if you like some sort of chorus sound that's ultra thick and watery that might not work for a tune you might need some real subtle chorus or something like that so just keep that in mind um, and then the last point I have, and this is a very important tone, and, and kind of like with being able to read, it's almost like a hard pill to swallow, but it is something that is just how it is. You're going to have to be able to double. And what doubling is means playing other instruments than electric guitar. You uh, probably like 95% of the time, if you get a musical book, you're going to be asked to play more than one instrument. Normally, it's going to be electric guitar and acoustic guitar. But you're going to want to make sure that you're a solid acoustic player. You might need to do some finger picking. Now, I haven't played many shows that require like intense flat picking, finger picking sort of things. You're not going to be able to need to be like Tommy Emanuel's levels of finger picking. But you never know. It might be a ballad. You might be asked to play acoustic and do some finger picking. And much like being able to play different styles, you just want to make sure you know enough to, to get by and that it sounds convincing. Um, you know, but a lot of guys don't play acoustic at all. They just play electric. And, you know, you might be able to be like, well, I can just pick up the acoustic, play the chords, and I'm good. But there is some effort that goes into making sure it all flows well. It's all smooth and not, you know, um, disjointed sounding. So you want to be able to be a pretty decent acoustic player as well. You will be asked to play other instruments as well, and you should uh, pick them up if you can or borrow them from a friend and start watching videos on them. Again, you're not really ever going to need to be a master on most of these instruments, but they will come up and you, like the other things I've mentioned, need to be very convincing on them. 12-string guitar comes up a lot um, and shows that one, you're going to be playing little licks here and there and some strumming, and it's just another thing, you know, 12 strings, it's okay, it's just double the strings, but um, you want to be able to play it and make sure you're not washing out the sound. Sometimes 12 string, when you play 12 string, you can go crazy with strumming, and yes, those extra strings do can kind of muddy the sound up. Um, so just make sure that you're, you know, can get a nice clean rounded sound on that. You will be asked to play classical guitar as well. I know a lot of guys don't play classical. Um, and again, I don't, I haven't played many shows where they're asking you to be like a prof extremely proficient classical player. Sometimes you'll just be playing licks and things like that. You don't need to be like, you know, like sitting with the guitar at an angle, like with the most proper pristine technique ever. I'm not saying that um, because ultimately the audience isn't going to be looking at you in the pit and like, oh, that guy didn't play the classical guitar with the most proper technique. This show sucks. You know, that's not going to happen. But it helps to know, you know, if you don't play classical guitar, it helps to know because it just helps with playing the instrument. There, But there are some shows where there's some difficult stuff. I've played a show called... Um, a Man of No Importance, which uh, only play acoustic instruments, and there was a fair amount of classical guitar, and there was some finger-picking stuff in that that was pretty tricky. I'm not, uh, uh, you know, electric is my first instrument, so I never, um, you know, like, went to school for uh, classical guitar, uh, but that show, you know, had me playing a lot of exposed finger-picking on classical, so I, I really wanted, you know, I, I've definitely practice that instrument a lot to make sure it at least comes off and sounding natural. Uh, natural, convincing, whatever word you want to use. I think they're both good terms to remember in the back of your mind. Banjo is another one. 
Um, a lot of shows, there's different types of banjo. Uh, you know, when you think of banjo, you think of bluegrass and country and finger picking with the finger picks. Um, f but there's other types of banjo. There's like uh, ragtime banjo, which is played with a pick, an actual guitar pick, where it's a very different style. You're doing lots of uh, tremolos and lots of glisses up the neck. Very different style. That's what you're normally going to be asked to play is a ragtime style banjo. So I would suggest... If you, if you don't play banjo, uh, so I would suggest, oops, I just dropped something, sorry. More often than not, um, you're going to be, uh, what it, what I would suggest because you're playing this ragtime style a lot is first learn that kind of style, watch some videos of ragtime banjo, Dixieland banjo, that kind of style where you're playing with a flat pick. And what I suggest to a lot of people is tune your banjo in Chicago tuning, which is where the little drone string, the fifth string, take that thing off. You're not going to need it. And then that D string, the top D string, tune that up to an E. And then you have the top four strings on a guitar. So you can fret all these chords that you're going to see in the book just like you can on a regular guitar. It's going to be really easy to read, and that way you're going to be able to play things a lot easier. Occasionally, you will have to play bluegrass banjo. Um, so, you know, if you want to learn traditional claw hammer banjo, um, you know, you want to practice that, but more often than not, you're going to be playing ragtime banjo, uh, which funny enough is very different than what you're going to find most of. So, so that's something to keep in mind. You're going to want to, you're going to want to learn a little mandolin doesn't come up as often, but you know, mandolin does come up, learn your basic chords on the mandolin, learn the fretboard, at least the first couple positions. So, because you will have to play notes on the mandolin and, uh, you know, Going from guitar, picking up a mandolin, it's flipped upside down, you, you know, oh, oh, what notes do I play? I don't know where these notes are. You're going to want to learn at least the, you know, first couple positions, like I said, so that you aren't really struggling with knowing, you know, with where everything is. And practice your tremolo technique, um, which is trickier than it thinks, well, than it sounds, uh, or you would think just being able to play nice, clean tremolo, single note tremolo on mandolin. Uh, dobro comes up. That one, to be honest with you, doesn't come up very often. Um, that's something you can dabble in if you wish. Uh, it, it really doesn't come up a lot, but it does occasionally. Ukulele does come up once in a while. Um, I normally recommend picking up a baritone ukulele because, again, it's those are not as common as the other types of ukulele, but they sound like a ukulele. They sound, you know, for what the show wants, just playing chords and things like that. Uh, baritone ukulele, just like I said for Chicago tuning banjo, is tuned like the top four strings of a guitar. So that's an instrument where you can pick it up. You're going to know where all the chords are. And if there's some a couple notes to play, you're going to be able to pick them out really easily. And again, they're just looking for the sound of a ukulele, and it's going to translate very well to the audience. There are a couple shows that call for, you know, different ukuleles. Um, Adam's Family has a big ukulele solo. That's something you'll just have to learn. Um, but mo mo more often than not, it's just going to be chords. You're going to be okay with a baritone ukulele. And the last one is harmonica. This is probably the double that comes up the very least, um, very infrequently, but it does come up. If it happens to come up, I guess just pick up a diatonic harmonica and just mess around with it. Maybe do a little bit of instruction on YouTube if you can find some stuff. Uh, you know, it rare, very rarely comes up. Dobro ukulele and harmonica come up very rarely. I kind of ordered these in what I think happens the most frequently. So electric guitar, of course, then acoustic 12 string, classical or nylon string guitar, banjo, mandolin, dobro, ukulele, harmonica. Those are really the doubles that you're ever going to see. There's some shows that have other ones like Lion King calls for the kalimba, the little thumb piano thing. Um, that's the only show I can think of that calls for it. You might have be asked to play um, Ebo. If you don't know what the Ebo is, it's like a little electric box that you hold above your string. It's battery powered and it uses vibrations to vibrate the string so you can sustain a string forever. And you can kind of, um, you know, slide up and down the neck and it causes this sort of almost um, violin bowing sort of sound. Uh, and it, it's very, it's a very cool sound. Um, there's only like a couple shows that call for that. Wicked, Mary Poppins, and Chess. Um, those are the only three shows I've ever seen that call for that. So that way, you, you know, you know, you, you know, if you're going to get hired for that show, that that's going to call for that. Those are the only three I think I've ever heard of that call for that. 
the Ebo is very tricky to use. It's not, an, it, it looks like it's an intuitive little piece of tech to use. You just hold it above the string and you slide your fingers around the frets. It's not that easy. It's tricky to switch between strings. It's one of those things where you really, really have to put in a lot of practice to get it sounding cleanly and not not bad. So those are the only doubles I can think of. Um, those are all my tips. I hope this was helpful. Those are just the things I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I know it sounds like a lot, but like anything, it's it. Uh, learning how to play guitar in musical theater is like learning how to play guitar. You know, like I said before, you thought it was impossible when you started playing, and I'm sure now you can play just fine. So they're just things you have to practice. Um, you know, maybe see if you can sit in on a show. If, if you know somebody that does theater, it doesn't have to be a guitarist. It could be a trumpet player. Ask them, hey, can I come sit on a rehearsal? Can I come sit in on a show? Just so you can get yourself immersed in, in, the, in the show. Other than just seeing a theater show, you, you, you see how it works behind the scenes. It doesn't have to be a guitarist. That way you can watch what they do, watch uh, how the conductor works and things like that. Um, you know, hey, maybe there's a little local uh, community theater show. Practice your reading skills. You know, it's not Broadway. It doesn't need to be there. You know, you want to always do the best job you can. Of course, you want to be professional. Even if it's a little rinky dink show in podunk town, you want to have the mindset that, hey, this audience paid to see the show. So I'm going to give them a good show and I'm going to give them a consistent show. I might not be feeling like playing a show tonight. You know, if this is your career, it's fun. I'll tell you that it's hell of a lot of fun to play guitar as a as a job, but like any job, there's plenty of nights where you do not want to come into work. You'd rather be sitting in your PJs at home watching TV, but you still got to do it, and you still need to give that audience the same show you did the night before. So yeah, even if you're going to do a little community theater show, still give it your all. But my point is that, you know, it's not a multi-million dollar production, so maybe they're not looking for professionals. You know, um, you might not be, be getting paid amazingly, but yeah, you might not be getting paid at all. Um, I always, of course, recommend for fair pay for professionals, but if you're starting out, you might take a free show here or there just to, you know, I hate to say for exposure, um, but to hone your skills. So something to think about. You might get into subbing for somebody. Um, sometimes people, you know, the the regular person that has that chair for the show, the guitar chair, might not be able to play it. And you know, if you've played a couple shows here and there, and you've kind of proven your name a little bit, they might say, "Hey, uh, I need a sub tonight. I got another gig, or got to go to a wedding, or something. You want a sub for me?" And then the music director says, "Hey, you were pretty good. I'm gonna put that guy in my list and call him." Or you never know, there might be someone in the audience. It could be a keyboard player or an oboe player said, hey, he's, he's good. Let's get him for this gig. So that's why you always want to be professional and well rehearsed so that so you never know who's there. So these are my tips. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to ask them. I'll try to help you. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like to do another one of these where I take you through what I think are good books to practice, um, shows that have a lot of styles in them that are um, good to learn because they just hone your skills for all these little type of um, cliches. You'll start to see how writers write for guitars and stuff like that. Um, books that are really challenging that really um, test your skills and things like that. Um, I'll also bring you, I'll do another video I'd really like to do on where I tell you like my tones for theater and what I think is building a good tone and things like that. So anyways, like I said before, ask any questions you have. I'll be happy to answer them. I hope this is helpful and have a great day.